Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's go into the word of God. And today I'm teaching about developing hunger, developing hunger and developing hunger for the word of God. I'm talking about the importance of that hunger for the word of God. Glory to God. It's, it's, this is good. Let me just get into it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. In verse 38. Now, this is a story. This is a story, very powerful story here. Mary and Martha had come together to host Jesus. And Mary sat down. And, you know, you know, and Mary sat down and was hearing the teaching of Jesus. But Martha was going around trying to organize everything. Like some of you love to organize, you know. Some of you love to organize. And the Bible says in verse 42, and maybe let's just jump a little. Let's, let's go back to verse 40, 40. And Martha was cumbered about with service. And it's important because sometimes service is good. But you need to know there are more important things than serving. For example, you could be in this church and you are in some department. You would do some things. Service is great. But he was distracted with much service. If you're not careful, you will be so... You know, some of you, you prepare so much to come to church. It's like a two or three hour journey. You eventually go to church and you're exhausted. Because of all the preparations you've done. No, that's not how it should be. You should come to church in your best. But if coming to church in your best will make you feel tired, that's not what it should be. The Bible says that she was encumbered. And, and that's why in our church, we always ask the workers. We say, stay for two services. The reason why is that one service is where you're serving in. The other service you get to sit down and hear the word of God. The reason why is that the petrol tank that carries petrol needs petrol to move. Yes. And the re what you will see is that you will see a lot of deacons, deaconesses, Christian leaders, and their life is so dry spiritually. And the reason why their life is so dry spiritually is because it's because they're just busy serving. In the word of Solomon, all those people's vineyard are taken care of, but my own vineyard have not paid attention to it. And this lady was serving and she went to meet Jesus and said, are you not bothered that I'm the one serving? He says, do I not that care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Be the ask her to come and join me that she may help me. And instead of Jesus Christ to say, hey, go and serve. Jesus Christ answered and said to her, Martha, you are careful and worried about many things. Then that just blew me apart. Because you need to see what he was saying carefully here. What he was saying is this. Some people have a lot of activity because there are things that worry them. So they distract themselves with a lot of work because deep down there's an emptiness. Deep down there's a worry. See what he says. He said, Martha, he says, you are, he said, the reason why you're not able to sit down is because you are careful. Careful is under what worry. Troubled. Another one anxious about many things. You're, you're worried about the fact that this transaction has not paid that transaction. Because this is the reason why you cannot sit down the feet of Jesus. Many of you are saying that, how come? Because you're so worried. And you will use activity to cover it up. He said you're so worried about a lot of things. He says you're worried and troubled. So the reason why some people do not pay attention to God's word is because on the inside, there is a lot of troubles that's going on. He said, you're worried about so many things. You're troubled about so many things. You're troubled about the doctor's report. And let me say something to you. This is the bad. Let me tell you. This is the way you pray and you'll not get an answer. How do you pray? When you have a challenge, instead of you to bring back yourself together and just meditate, what you do is that, <laughs> what you do is that you run to prayer first. You will pray from a place of fear, not a place of faith. So you go to the hospital and doctor says, we can see something like a tumor. Hey, father, father. No, 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 no. That's not prayer. That's triggered by fear. And prayer triggered by fear doesn't work. 
All of a sudden, the deadline is coming and you have four more days to pay the bill. And you have three more days to pay the bill. And the employment has not come. You slow down a little. What do you slow down? Hey, how do you slow down? You bring your emotions under control. That's why the scripture that comes to mind is this. He said, be still and know that I am the Lord. The reason why you think God is not talking to you is this. Your emotions are louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit. The reason why some Christians say, that's a good time to clap. Hallelujah. The reason why some Christians say they never hear the voice of God is this. Because the voice of worry, anxiety, emotions has overwhelmed the voice of God. God is still speaking, but those voices are louder. And that's why he says, be still and know that I am the Lord. Someone say, be still means stand. No, he's talking about an inner stillness. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Then it says, Mary, you are careful and troubled about many things. And that's why you get... So, uh, most people that can't study the Bible, the reason why is that their mind is everywhere. If you're going to study the Bible, you must put your mind together somewhere. He says this. Then he says this. Watch this. He says, one thing is needful. That's shocked me. He says, I know you have many trouble, but one thing is needful. Not two, not three. Not four, not five. Is it just one thing? He says, one thing is needful. And the next is it, Mary has chosen the good path. Ah, so by choosing the word of God, I choose a good path. Then he says something. He said, which shall not be taken from her. Meaning, whatever the word of God gives you, nobody can take it. The reason why they took the contract, well, it was man that gave you the contract. They organized it for you. Hey, hey, he says, he says, that she has taken, no man can. When God gives you something, even God says, the gift on the callings of God are without repentance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you here? Yes, this is so good. This is so good. So, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I want to be honest. Sometimes you come across people that be like, um, you're going to church again on Wednesday. But you went last Sunday. He said, yeah. And you go, he said, why, why do you go to church very often? And you know the truth is that many Christians cannot defend it. He said, yeah, because we, that's what we do. Christians, we go to church. The challenge is that if you don't understand the reason why you do something, you will stop it very soon. Now, as things get very tight, you will throw it off. So the question is this. This is a question. Why does a Christian go to church? And if you don't know why you go to church, you can come to church and miss the whole purpose. You know, you know, you know. When I was younger, my my, my parents' church. Ooh, it was fashion Sunday every Sunday. You have, even have people that will wear hair tie that will block your view. And it was fashion. That's the day you take the best car out. Uh, the best car in my family was reserved for Sunday. And when you just remember, I would say, "What? Where are you going to? Go and wear your church." Ah! You know, because all the children must be well dressed. And to some people. Church is another pageant. It's a place I wear the shoes. I wear makeup. I do this. That's wonderful, but that's not the purpose of church. One, the Bible calls church a place of prayer. So, when you come on a Sunday, you must prepare to pray. Don't say, they're praying too much. Why did you come? This is not the STV. Do you know that? It's a place of prayer. If I say, let us pray, some will be angry. Why are you angry? The Bible calls the house of God the place of prayer. But no, it's just not the place of prayer. It's a place, the Bible called it the ground of truth. It's a place where the word of God is being taught. That's why, <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Sometimes you watch YouTube or Facebook and you see all this nonsense. Someone goes to their service and they're using two hours to cast out the demon. I'm like, that's not what the Bible says about the church. The most important thing in the church is hearing the word of God. That's why when you read the ministry of Jesus Christ, 70% it was teaching. It was teaching. It was teaching. It was teaching. Teaching. He was not, you know, you can go to a church where they tell you about science and management. <laughs> that's good, but that's what a church should do more than that. So the question is, is why is, why is listening to the word of God important? That's what I'm going to. Why is it important? First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Maybe if you know why it's important, when you are home, you would take out your Bible and study. I had a story about a man, and um, he was their pastor. He used to come to their house every December. 
And um, I think when he had come this time around, there was some money that was on the table. And by the time the pastor left, the money was longer on the table. And this was some dollars. But the wife thought that the only person, there are three of us here, did pastor steal the money? But the husband could not allow the wife to ask pastor, Tasa, did you take the money? So they kept quiet. So this was December. The next year, I came to the visit again. It was a yearly visit, visit in December. I came in December. The wife, this time around, could not take it again. As they were eating on that same table, the wife just said, Sir, just by chance, we left $2,000 on the table last year when you came. By the time you left, he said, the money wasn't there again. Just by chance, did you see it? And the pastor said, oh yes, I did see it. And I put it in the Bible on the table. You know what that meant? That meant for one who here, they had not opened the Bible. He said, I put it. He said, since you guys say you love the Bible, I thought that you would find it when you read it the next day. He said, I put it in the Bible on the table. Is that not your Bible is? <laughs> Some of you, if we see your Bible so dusty, sometimes I use Bible app. Even the app is only opened on Sunday. Are you here? First Peter chapter 2. Hey, so, so the reason why I'm saying so is that, you know, very, very, I mean, all of you that watch it from Canada, from Australia, from all around the world, I need to pay attention to this. Because one word I hear all around the world is this word, I am depressed. It's a common word. When I was younger, that was, was not common. If you go to, I'm depressed. The question is that, hey, why do people get depressed? What should they do when they're depressed? This is very important. And they have a lot of reasons why they're depressed. But, but so people say that, you know, I, I just don't have that. I just don't, I've lost the spark. You say, I've lost the spark. I'm not, that, I'm not that passionate about life again. What do you do when you don't, you've lost the spark and you're not that passionate about life again? What causes it? What do you do? What is it, how is it connected to God's word? First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. You will love this. See what the Bible says. Oh, are you there? He says, as newborn babe, do what? Desire. The sincere milk of the spirit. Which is what? He says, desire the sincere milk of the word. So, the milk is the word. And it's milk because he's talking about a babe. For an adult, Hebrew says, it's meat. Because it's still the word. So, the word of God is both milk and meat. Because the word of God is food. He says, why do you want the word? That you may what? Grow. So, the word of God grows us. The word of God grows us. You can't grow as a Christian without the word of God. There's something about the, the ability to grow is tied to the word of God. If you want to grow your children, listen to me. All of you that have kids, you must spend time with your children and teach them the word so that you can grow their spirits. The word grows us. But the question is this. When you don't eat for a long time, what happens to you? Tell me. What, what happens? You feel weak. You lose cognitive senses. You're not able to do what you can do again. Because what? You've not eaten. Okay. Who here, because you've not eaten, maybe from last time to today, you feel weak? Who here feels weak because... You've not eaten. You didn't eat last night. Maybe you missed dinner. Then today also you've not eaten. You're just managing yourself. At least you came to church. You feel it. Anybody like that? Who? I can find one. I know why the choir is waving. You know, I can find one. Another person again? I, who is that at the back? I can't see. Who, who is that raising up the hand? Who, I need someone to raise up. Let's be honest. Who? Someone is pointing at somebody else and touching their head. <laughs> Why not just point for yourself? So if, if you feel weak, you're in church, maybe you, you feel a bit weak, you're like, oh. after saying, just go and eat because I feel weak a little. Sarah, I've seen your hands, you know. Yeah. <laughs> who? who, who? What is, that? is that? Is that Desmond there? Right? Desmond, come, come, come. Yeah. Come. You feel weak, right? Where, where is he? Come, come. Yeah, come. Yeah, bring my table.
Yeah, just put it here. Where's the camera? I don't know why the camera is staying here. You should be here. Because they think I'm joking. I, I want to be a blessing to you. I want to be a blessing to you. So, so, I, but, I, no, no, you will see. It's, it's not trick. It's real food. It's nice. Look, come and show them the food. Show them the food. Ha, ha, but we need to take, how do you feel right now? You know, how do you feel? A bit, yeah? Just, uh, you, you see the food? You're just tired. Yeah, kind of Praise God. Can you give me my, yeah. You tell me. Yeah, I'm just tired and kind of hungry. Yeah, you're tired and kind of hungry. So you're able to do, you know, just so much activity. Just yeah. What? You're just, just gliding. gliding. Yeah, like, let's just finish this. Okay, sir, please sit down and eat. You don't eat in public. <laughs> That's for go sit down and eat. <laughs> Break your rule for today. This is the cutlery. Yeah. Yeah. Let me help you. Let me help you. Praise God. This is so good. That's why I love our church. We're changing lives. <laughs> if you come in hungry, you'll get food. Praise God. <laughs> he blessed it. I love this brother. <laughs> I... <laughs> so obviously, why did that is up my hand? You see the problem? <laughs> what? It's cold? Uh, why, why did the guys make it cold? You want to microwave it and bring it back? Okay, just eat the chicken. Just manage that one. Just manage the chicken. I don't know why you're bringing cold food. Okay, what does not mind cold one? <laughs> It's so just one more, just one more, just one more. Just, I want to just have energy, just energy. Hold on. Let him keep eating. Let, just keep talking to me. Look at me, look at me. Do you notice he said he was weak? He felt somehow. Then he's beginning to eat. Then when he eats, when, he, when, he's, when he's done eating, what happens to him? He feels stronger. Question. Yeah. I just want him to... Just put it in your mouth first before, you know. Praise God. I know your wife is feeling very bad. How come you're the only one eating all alone? Then you can come. You can drink some water. You can come, you know. Can you talk without that? Yeah. You have your own water. Okay, that's good. Here. How do you feel? I'm still hungry. You're still hungry. But if you finish this, if you finish this, if it was hot, how would you have felt? I'm better. Be better. Yeah. So... Do you feel a bit energized? Mm, just because I've seen the food, right? Yeah. No, no, not because you've seen the food. If you had eaten all of this food, would you have felt more energized? Yes, I would have. You would have felt. The question is this. This is what I'm saying. Despond, what did you eat? Food or energy? Food. But why do you have energy? Because there's something about when we eat food, that food turns into energy within our spirits, in, within our body. There's something about when we eat the word that the word turns into energy. So every time you say I'm spiritually weak, it's because you're not eating. Every time you say I'm depressed, it's because you're not eating. Because if you are eating, food will turn into energy. If you are eating the word of God, you will have energy in your spirit. Stop stabbing your spirits. Thank you, sir. Glory to God. You know, the, the, the way I learned this was this. I learned this recently. You know, I was doing some fast not too long ago. And by the third or fourth day, I felt very weak. So I caught someone. He said, I know it's the fast. He said, no, no, no. It's the fast that I have to find a way if I want to continue to blend fruit and just drink the fruit and all of those kind of things. And I said, wow. But the reason why I was weak was because I wasn't... See, the thing is this. When you're spiritually weak, it's because you're not taking in the word of God. Because the word of God energizes you. That's what I'm going to. The word of God energizes you. So you'll find out, why am I depressed? Because there's no energy in the spirit. 
He says, if you fall in the days of battle, what happens? Your strength is small. So you, you, you find out, you know, everything is, all of a sudden, the business problem is getting at you. This is getting at you. The reason why is simple, that what's happening, you have low energy. Where do you get energy from? By feeding on the word of God. Because the word of God is meat and milk. The word of God is what? Is meat and milk. The word of God is meat and milk. You need to ask yourself, you need to ask yourself, I, I hope the way I feel, I don't have spiritual kwashoko. Because some of you have spiritual kwashoko. Let me ask you anybody, do you have spiritual kwashoko? Yeah. Sister Charity, let me ask you anybody, do you have spiritual kwashoko? Some people are your kashoko. No, 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 no. No, I know how to get strength. So, what do I do when I get overwhelmed? What do I do when I get depressed? What do I do when I get stressed? I go to the word of God. I know that I'm thirsty. And let me tell you something. Do you know that there are some seasons in your life? For example, if you are very athletic, you will need to eat more. Yes or no? There's some season in your life where you burn a lot of calories. What do you need to do? You need to increase your diet. There's season in your life, maybe because of pressure in the marriage, maybe because of pressure at work, maybe because of the things that are going on in the company, and there's lots of pressure on you. What do you do? I know you are eating the word, but you need to increase your diet. Some of you, you are still, oh my God, can, can we go deeper today? Some of you, the spiritual food you ate is for children. That's why it's as if you're not eating because you are eating what is for children. Listen to me. You are grown up now. Stop taking SMA. Yeah. Hey. You are still taking SMA. After, after 10 minutes of the word of God, ah, I'm already tired. No, sir. It, that cannot take you again. Can your friend come and see you and you give them conflict with sugar? It's not food. It's food. But at a certain age, when they come and see you, if it's not swallow, it is what the fuck can carry. And the reason why is that they need something to start. They need to eat and be okay. The reason why a lot of people have to, because you will see. So you're going through pressure. I know you read the Bible, but increase your diet. Because you're going through lots of pressure now. What does that mean? Let's say you, you can make letters. Let's say you're a businessman and you're going to a season where business becomes very terrible. What you now do is to increase the diet. What does increase the diet mean? I normally study one chapter of the Bible every day before. But I've been studying that one chapter, but it's still impacting me. I still don't have energy. Then I increase that one chapter to two or three. The reason why is that I want there's something I want to get out. So at the afternoon, I will go to the Harvest TV page and play messages and play messages. The reason why is that I understand something, that the word of God energizes me. So if I find myself losing energy, then I have to fix that. Glory to God. Someone says, huh? what do you do like when you don't feel like praying? There's some scripture that you start quoting that makes you pray. I'm telling you, why? The word of God energizes you. Someone said, the word of God energizes me. What are the scriptures? You will just declare. Acts. <laughs> the Bible says, he says, before you've asked, I've answered. He said, why you are calling, I've heard. He says, ask and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Hallelujah. He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He said anything to have for me. Before you say the scripture, you have been turned on in the spirit. Oh my God, your spiritual senses, they come alive. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. See, this is the difference between people that pray from problem and pray from faith. They just called you. You've lost the contract. You go to the Bible. Which report will you believe? You lost the contract. Hey, Jehovah, Jehovah. You're praying out of fear. That does not work. Relax. Go to the Bible. Go to the Bible. Energize your faith. Who's, <laughs> you will say, hey, whose report is Isaiah? Do you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why the report of the Lord? Because Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus is the truth. 
what they said is a fact. Jesus is a truth. What they said is a fact. Fact is always changing. Truth does not change. Hallelujah. The fact is that we saw a fiber. The truth is that you are healed. The fact is that there's no money in your account. The truth is that the Lord is your shepherd you shall not want. The fact is that you don't have a husband. The truth is this. God will perfect all that concerns you. The fact is that this has worked against you and they've taken it away. But the truth is this. All things work together for good to them that love God. And they work a chokamanana. They work according to his purpose. There's no way you pray like this. The hell your head won't stand up. This is what happens in Bible study. That's why, I don't know, you know, some of you, read the Bible. You are reading like integrated science. Above you. PH Nelcon. The first law of physics. Of thermodynamics. That's why you read the Bible. You read it from your spirit. Because I'm feeding. I'm feeding. I'm feeding. I, I want to draw. I'm feeding. Ha. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I wish that brother ate the chicken. Because I want to see how he eat the bone. Ah, you know how you eat bone? <laughs> Some of you that don't eat bone, just leave the bone. No, that's how you eat bone. <laughs> you what? You crack it. You take the word of God. You look at it and say, let me crack it. Ah, you stay. <laughs> Why? The, the, see, the sweetest part of the word is when you crack it. You know, have you eaten jollof rice before? There's something about the bottom pot. <laughs> There's bottom, that pot that has the real sauce, everything, everything has stayed there. When you're you say, and John told Peter, and you are, ah, you are still eating top. You have to bottom pot. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You crack it. You leave Bible study, say, what happened to you? I'm full of the word of God. Somebody say Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The word of God energizes us. Let me show you two scriptures. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to verse 11. Oh glory to God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to verse 11. Then we go to Psalm 119 verse 62. If you have never shouted before in Bible study, there's something wrong with you. Ah, you the, the way the Bible is, you must find some things. You must find, <laughs> you must find some things that will make you shout. See what the Bible says. This is Paul praying, Colossians 1. He said, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard of you, do not cease to pray for you, to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge, can you see, knowledge, God's word, of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10, verse 10 says this. He says, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing work, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in what? In the knowledge of who? Then verse 11. Well, so increase in knowledge of God, what happens to you? Verse 11. See what it says. It says, strengthened. Aha. Uh -huh. He says, as you are filled, you are strengthened. They're shutting in the office. They wonder, where is your uncle? I'm strengthened. The word of God strengthens me. Ah, why are you always a chicken liver? The guy said, uh, uh, the thing will break. He said, break. I said, break. Why? I'm strengthened on the inside by the word of God. This is for people that don't read the word of God religiously. It's not a religious reading. Glory to God. I said glory to God. As soon as David heard the word of God overtake, pursue, it took off. So, why do I read the word of God? Every morning I need fresh energy. I, I need fresh, the reason why is that as I go through the day, I'm drained. Someone says, why do you eat every day? Because the food is lost as you work. Why do you read the Bible every day? Because you need fresh energy. As you go through the day, you're drained. That's why it says, give us each day our daily bread. There are many things I want to destroy your faith, destroy you, destroy your life. And the, you're using the battle, the, in, the, the power on the inside to fight. The second thing the word of God does is this. <laughs> I love this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. 
What's my capsule? Can you give me some tablets? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Thank you. He says this. He says, for the word of God is what? Quick. And what? Mm -mm. Uh -uh. He said the word of God is quick. The word quick is an old English word. It means it's alive. <laughs> this is why the word doesn't work for some people. When I was younger, I had an aunt. I went to the house. They just had the baby. So the baby was in the court. So I went to get the baby. And I said, him, take his small Bible. They now open to Psalm 91 and open by the head of the baby. Have you seen that before? Yes. Oh, such a dumb thing. And I thought, I was curious. So I now asked my aunt. I said, Auntie, what's the purpose of this Bible on the head? He said, Oh, to drive away evil spirits. Nonsense. Stupidity. Don't you understand what Jesus Christ said? Jesus said, the letter kill it. He said the book means nothing. If you like, take the Bible. Some of you, when, sometimes you watch a pastor trying to pray. You take the Bible, point at somebody. Why is he pointing it? It doesn't matter. Some people even carry it like this. It doesn't matter if you carry it or not. The letter, the letter kill it. The letter kill it. He said, it's the spirit that gives it life. What's the spirit when the word gets inside you? It's the word inside that, comes, that has life. Don't be carrying Bible and say, I'm putting something 35 here. No. When the demon comes, you will tell the Bible and used to slap you. Because he knows that you are, you are spiritually ignorant. Jesus said, he said, it's the word that I speak to you that they are spirit and they are life. Uh -uh. Don't put the Bible on the bed. Put it on the inside. Hey, hey. Don't put it on the bed. Put it on the inside. Don't put it on the bed. Put it on the inside. How do you put it on the inside? By studying it. By believing it. By studying By believing it. By confessing it. By studying it. You'll take the Bible and put it on the inside. I told you, why do we study the Bible? Because the Bible conveys God's ability. Ah! The Bible, con the, the word of God, let me put it this way. This is a better way to put it. The word of God conveys supernatural power. John chapter 1 says something. It says, all things were made by the word. And without the word is nothing that is made. So, God does everything by his word. It says the word is powerful. When the word is powerful, the word contains ability. When God says something, the power to make that thing happen is in the word. That's what I'm going to. When God says something, the power to make that thing happen is in the word. I'll, let me give an example. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. See what the Bible says here. Mary, the angel appeared to Mary. And the angel told Mary, he said, Mary, you're going to get pregnant. The Mary being a nice woman says, Angel, how will I get pregnant? I'd have no man. The angel looked at him and said, Too late. I've spoken the word to you. He said, What will make you pregnant is in what I've said to you. Because me telling you be pregnant, in that word be pregnant, you are pregnant. Because the word of God carries, let, let me see, let me say, this. look at this capsule. This capsule will have, I hope I can hope on this. This capsule will have powder. It will have some powder. The question is this. That's how God's word is. The word of God, inside the word of God, there's, caps, there's powder. The powder is the power that makes it happen. So, once you swallow the word, you swallow the power. Are you hearing me? Look at it. Inside this capsule, there's powder. There's powder. See, once you swallow the word, you swallow the power. Because the power of God, that's why Paul said in Romans chapter 1, I'm not afraid of the gospel of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. Some people say, I want the power of God. The power of God is in his word. What do you do? Swallow the word, you swallow power. Oh my God. Swallow the word, you swallow power. 
Because the same way the capsule contains the powder, the word of God contains the power to make it happen. You don't understand. The word of God by itself can make things happen. It does not need prayer. Oh my God. The word of God contains. Father, help me say this well. Say, I receive it. Psalm 107 verse 20. The word of God contains power. I'm going to, when I apply it to you, you'll get what I'm saying. The Bible says he sent his word. What happened? What did he do to heal them? See, you must understand, for, you, for dead to be healing, the healing word was enough for them to be healed. He didn't have to do anything extra. He just said, healed. Where was the power to heal? The power to heal was in the healing word. Just like the capsule contains the powder, the healing word contains healing. You're getting it. Can I have one more chair? Please come and put it here. Just here. Thank you. Please come. I want to show you something. This man is Peter. Stand on the chair, please. Stand. Yes. You want someone to hold it for you? Will you feel comfortable that way? You can stand. Okay. If you want someone to hold it for you, can I get someone to hold it for him so they can feel comfortable? That's good. You know, I asked him to stand. I want to give you a story, a scenario. One day, just Christ finished praying, and the sheep was in the midst of the sea. Peter now saw just Christ come. He said, it's a ghost. Just as he said, no, it's not a ghost. To, it's me. Then Peter said, ask me to come. I want to ask you a question. Why did Peter ask Jesus Christ to ask him to come? Think about it. I want to think about it. Why didn't you say, just as you, jump out to go and meet him? Why did he ask him to come? Talk to me now. The reason why he asked him to come was this. In the word come, lies the power to walk on water. But Jesus had to say the word come. I hope you know, they were not on the canoe. That was lower to the water. They were the sheep. As soon as you're going to jump down to the, to the floor. Or jump to the stage. If that's easy for you. As soon as he said come. Watch this now. I want to think of the law of gravity. Saul was on a sheep. Not a canoe. Not a boat. On a sheep. And he jumped. Jump. And as soon as he jumped. The water became solid. How did it become solid? Because Jesus said come. In the word come was the power to make the water solid. I, I want to show you something. Why am I telling you this? When God says something, the power to make it happen is in that word. So when you receive the word, you receive the power to make that thing happen. Thank you. That was why when those guys got to the tomb of Lazarus, I want to say this to you quickly. You can let me take the chair also. When Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, watch this now. I hope you know the tomb those days are not like where we bury one person. The tomb is like a, a, a burial ground. So in the tomb, they bury like 25 people, 50 people in one tomb. They'll just put Jesus Christ there. So when they put, when, they, when Jesus Christ got to the tomb of Lazarus, he looked inside. Listen to what he said. He said, Lazarus, he said, come forth. Question. Why didn't he say comfort? Because if he had said comfort, the power of God would be released. The one that died at Abraham's time will comfort. So he had to direct and limit the power and say, Lazarus, comfort. Why? The power of God is in his word. Why am I telling you this? Every time you are studying the word, there's a transfer of power. 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 There's, so what does this mean? If the doctor, let me tell you something. If you're looking for a contract, go to the word. As you begin to read the word, 
the ability that makes people get contract will enter you from the word. Did you hear what Ezekiel said? He said, as he spoke to me, the spirit entered me. Yes, My God. You didn't hear what I said? He said, as he spoke, because the word are spirits, they are creative. He said, as he spoke to me, this is what happens. Let me tell you something. This is how you do it. You are believing God for funding. Get five scriptures on funding. Be meditating. In the process of meditating, the spirit will leave the book and enter you. When the spirit enters you, who you have to talk to, what you have to do, you will know. Because the spirit has entered. There's some, I'm telling you, but the challenge is to be able to sit down. That's why just Christ told Martha, he says, what Mary has taken? Because she was not just listening, she was receiving something. This is why we hear the word of God. We are not just listening, we are what? Receiving something. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's read one scripture. Acts chapter 14 verse 9. And we'll close from here. The power of God's word. The power of God's word. The power of God's word. Uh, that's it. Well, no, no, no. We can't end that way. We have to read one scripture. <laughs> There's a scripture I say for the best. I, John 10, 35. That's not what we read now, but that's the last one. Look at what the Bible says. Verse, verse 8. Look at the story. Look at the story. The Bible says, and there was a certain man in Lystra, impotent within his feet. The Bible says the man had legs, but the leg was paralyzed. What it means is that the man had a business, but the business was paralyzed. It wasn't profitable. The man had a marriage, but the marriage wasn't working. It was paralyzed. The Bible says that being crippled from his mother's feet. So if you have a business that is paralyzed, that's not working, pay attention. He says, who has never walked? What did the Bible say? Verse 9. See how he got healed. The Bible says, the same head Paul speak. Whom steadfastly beholding him, perceiving he had faith to be healed. The next verse. Please verse 10. And said with a loud voice. He says, stand up right on their feet. And the Bible says, he leaped and walked. Question. How did he get healed? He just sat down and was listening. He just sat down. And was listening. Listen to me. If you want your business to change, look for the scripture. Just sit down and listen. You'll be surprised out of the transformation. But for Christians, eh, to sit down and listen. Hey! No. We are too busy. And Jesus Christ told Martha, I said, one thing is needful. Mary has chosen it. And that which she has chosen, no man can take it from her. Let's close with the scripture. John chapter 10 verse 35. And this is for everyone. Someone says, Pastor, I've been standing upon the word of God. I don't know what to do again. Pay attention to this. John chapter 10 verse 35. Are you ready? Let's read together. I want to go. Continue. Did you hear me? He said, the scripture shall... He said, the scripture cannot be broken. So when God says about you that none shall lack a meat as a woman as a man, I'm telling you what the Bible says. The scripture cannot be broken. When the Bible says no pestilence will come near you and they say monkey pox has broken out, he said the scripture cannot be broken. If the, the Bible says that since I was young, now I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither have I seen his sin begging. Remember, the scripture cannot be broken. The person that will break the scripture does not exist. Are you hearing me? You go to the hospital and they look at you, can't have a child. You say, Doctor, I understand, but I will bring my child to this hospital. Doctor say, You don't understand what you're talking about. I say, I understand because the scripture cannot be broken. Why? He says, There shall not be barren amongst you. He said, The number of your days will fulfill. They say, You have cancer, you will die at 40. He said, Not me. Why? The numbers of my days are with you. Why? The scripture can't. Did you hear it? He cannot be broken. He says it this way. He said, God is not a man that should lie. You know how powerful that is? He said, God cannot lie. If God lies, that lie becomes the truth. <laughs> you don't get this. Though. He, by chance, God looks at me and says, ah, I love the green jacket you are wearing. 
and it's blue I'm wearing. The moment he says it, the jacket becomes green. Because instead of God's word to fail, things will change to adjust to God's word. That's why he says, heaven and earth may pass away. He said, my word will never pass away. Are you getting this thing now? If this blue jacket I'm wearing, if God just says, ah, I like your green jacket. You, if before you say, God is not green, you will look at yourself. And the jacket has become green. The reason why is that, instead of God to lie, circumstances will alter for what God to say to come to pass. That's why he says, he said, though heaven and earth pass away, not a title, not a title of my word will pass away. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe there are people that are praying for capital here. Maybe because it's hard, God said you're depressed. What I have, the word of God to you is this. God is telling you the scripture cannot be broken. Go back to it, sir. What I say, go back to it. Many of you come to church, but you have forgotten the place of believing. You are now playing religion. You know religion? Yeah, let's come because we are coming. No! You go back to active faith. You go back to believing the word of God. You go back where you take the word of God and begin to confess it. You are confessing over that child. You are confessing over that job. You know, some of us, someone told me, say, ah, why do people give so aggressively? I said, the reason why is this. The scripture cannot be, for, cannot be broken. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. The scripture cannot be broken. Somebody say the scriptures. And somebody say the scriptures cannot be broken. That's it. The scripture cannot be broken. I know you have lost money in your business, but what does the Bible say? This is what the Bible says. All things work together for good. So them that love God and they work according to purpose. Draw chapter 2 says, the yes that the canker won and the caterpillar has stolen. He said, I will restore back unto you. The book of Proverbs says, when a thief is found, he shall be compelled to resource sevenfold. That means God will return time, resources and personnel. You will declare to yourself that the scripture cannot be broken. They are walking against your office. You will declare like, like Joseph. He says, what you thought for evil, my God, has turned that out for good. Why? The scripture cannot be broken. Someone said, the scripture cannot be broken. You go back to the hospital and you, you go back. You say, I've come back to test. You say, ah, what happened? He said, because I now have a miracle. Where did he go to? I went to Jesus. You are doctors. He's the great physician. Does, did, you, did you hear the testimony in next level prayers? You need to join next level prayers. Kai! said the testimony. She said, I've not seen my prayer for almost one year. He said, as you finish praying, bam, I began to flow. Another lady sent the testimony. When she was 21, they removed a fallopian tube. She went back after next step, five years gap. The fallopian tube they removed was restored back there. When she told me, I said, mm, are you sure? He said, pastor, this is not film trick. Medical report, they move it. Even if doctors did not, did not do it. Pastor, this is a picture of my side. This is the scar of the operation. What did my, he said, they caught me. This is the mark. Ah, I said, they caught you. How did he come back? Our God is a maker. Every maker has fair part. If doctor says condemned, he will replace it. Why? The scripture cannot be broken. Listen to me, no matter what they've told you. Remember, today, the scripture cannot be broken. Let's start up and pray. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say the scriptures cannot be broken. Lift up your hands and begin to declare God's word. Go ahead and declare God's word. The scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken.